Christmas decorations are everywhere after Thanksgiving, but one message was recently considered too controversial to display. It almost cost an elderly woman her apartment. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. What could be more natural than a Christian woman taking the opportunity at this time of year to share her feelings with a scripture verse posted to her door? But in 2017, that can get you into trouble. The good news is the American Center for Law and Justice was able to come to the lady's defense. Matthew Clark is a senior counsel with the ACLJ. Matthew, thanks for visiting with us again. It's been a few years. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. What was a Bible verse that the Massachusetts housing complex found so potentially offensive? So you have this housing complex in Massachusetts, and everybody is putting out their version of Christmas decorations. Our client uh, put out a Bible verse on her door, a scripture verse, and maybe a couple of different ones at, at different times. But the person who was overseeing this complex wrote a very threatening demand letter ordering her to remove that Bible verse from her door. Amazing. It seems we Americans have lost our sense of history. It hasn't been that long ago since celebrating Jesus' birth was considered normal. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was watching a a Christmas episode of The Love Boat, produced in the 1980s, in which the captain said grace over a banquet, thanking the Heavenly Father for sending his son. But now it seems like all the media, government, and culture can think about is political correctness. But getting back to our story, just what was the apartment complex claiming? actually claiming that by putting a Bible verse on her door, this woman was violating the Fair Housing Act, that somehow it was making others feel discriminated against for their non-religious beliefs by her posting her own beliefs on her front door, which is exactly backwards because it actually states, and I'm quoting now from the Fair Housing Act, to discriminate against any person in the terms, conditions, or privileges of a rental, of a dwelling, or the provision of services and facilities and connections therewith because of religion is actually a violation of the law. I'm glad you were able to uh, set them straight. I'm sure the elderly woman herself was afraid of the heavy-handed repercussions from the complex. How did she come to contact the uh, ACLJ? And that's a very good point because a lot of these situations when landlord, in this case, makes those kind of threatening legal arguments against someone that they are violating the law for expressing their religious beliefs and they have no recourse, nowhere to go, or no don't realize that the law is actually on their side when they get something so threatening in the mail from sounding like it's actually describing the law, which which it wasn't. And in this case, she actually went to our website, aclj.org, and on our resources page, you can go to get legal help. And we encourage anybody with a similar situation to go to our website, aclj.org, and fill out the form. We can look at your situation and see if it's something that we can help out with. What were you able to do? It was a quick resolution. We were able to explain the law, and he backed down when he realized that some attorneys knew the law and were going to defend that in court. He backed right down. And, and that's a lot of the times what these situations are. They send out the, the threatening letter, but if you actually have an attorney come and explain what the law is, they back right down. I'm glad no court action was necessary, or the issue may not have been settled even by next Christmas. Well, that's exactly right. Sometimes these situations can take a very long time. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add about the case? It's an important victory right here at Christmas. It's something that we are continuing to do across the country where we find these kind of situations of anti-religious or anti-Christian bigotry and attacks on those of faith. We are willing and ready to step out and defend those of faith, to defend Christians who are being targeted because of their beliefs, and we're able to win. Matthew, it's stories like this that give encouragement to those of us who go against the flow of political correctness. Thanks for talking with us today. Thanks for having me, and Merry Christmas to you and your listeners. Merry Christmas, Matthew. Matthew Clark is a senior counsel with the American Center for Law and Justice. You can learn more by checking out its website, aclj.org. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear this. 
Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.